Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. Now, we've been going through several messages concerning the command, Come out of her, my people, in Revelation 18. And that means that we are to understand the way of God versus the way of the world, and that we are to quit living in the way of the world. Even though we live in the world, we're still not to be part of the world. So let's look at it today. We find in Matthew 24, that it says, lawlessness shall be multiplied. Is that true? Now stop and think about that for just a minute. Written nearly 2,000 years ago. Is that true? Look at what's been going on in the news just recently. Shootings, killings, warring, and all of that sort of thing. Look at the crime that is in almost every city, town, and village that there is. So we're to come out. Now, why do we need to come out? Because God has something greater for us. Just a little sidebar on this, which is a whole other topic. God has called us to rule with Jesus Christ when he returns to the earth, not as physical human beings but as transformed, raised from the dead, spirit beings to rule with Christ. And so we have a great calling. So coming out of this is what we need to do. Now let's also see what the world is like. Let's come here to 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Now, remember, all this was written nearly 2,000 years ago. And another thing to understand about the Word of God is this. It is the truth of God from the God of truth to us. And hidden within the pages of the Bible, called the mystery of God, is His plan. What is He doing? Now let me just ask you a question, see how much you grasp of what's going on. Do you know why you were born? Why did God create so many people made in his image, male and female? Why did he do that? What is his purpose? Well, you write for our book, From a Speck of Dust to a Son of God, Why Were You Born? And that will open your eyes like nothing else. to understand about the way of God, even though the world itself is living in evil and lawlessness. Now, lawlessness is defined in 1 John 3, 4, is transgression of the law. But those who practice lawlessness, it goes beyond that. Because lawlessness also covers the things that to human nature appears to be very good. But it's still sin against God. So let me ask you a question. How many things do you do that you think are really good, but have you ever examined whether they're good with God? See, because when you go back to the beginning of the Bible with Adam and Eve, they ate off the tree of the knowledge of good, and evil. So that's the way human nature is, good and evil. But if the human mind isn't trained, it isn't given the right way to live, to think, and so forth, it's going to multiply itself into lawlessness. Look at what is happening in the world today. I'm Lori, the mom. I'm Ken, the father. And we have two children. Our daughter is Kayla, age eight. <laughs> yes, you are! And our son, Brandon, who is age 11. Mom! Oh, you want to dance? Mom. I'm a stay-at-home mom. Okay, are you guys coming to dinner or not? Lock the door again. Okay, mom. Okay. How many times have I told you not to lock the f- 
door. And I'm a software engineer who works from home, which makes me very accessible to the family. Although Ken is physically here, he's not really as available as I think he thinks he is. Ken is so absorbed in his own work Ow! that I think he tunes out all the conflicts with the kids. As parents, I feel like we've lost the battle for Brandon and Kayla. This is not it's a place get your of feet joy. out of the fridge. No, you're 11 years old. I your want age. To Come Kayla. on, you're 11. Why are you, why are you sitting? I really don't know how to deal with Kayla's sassy attitude. Kayla, I'm telling you, you shut up? I'm not going to shut up. You shut up. Don't even flip me off. Put that finger back where it belongs. Ken and Kayla, dinner's ready. You guys, dinner. Okay, are you guys coming to dinner or not? Am I getting by myself again? Okay. I'm emotionally and physically drained to the point where I feel like I'm just gonna break down. And here is the sole root cause. And yet many people do not understand how destructive that this is. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. Know this also, so this is what we are to know, that in the last days, and we're surely living in the last days, perilous times shall come for men or because men will be lovers of self. Now, there's a song out there that is, I love myself the way that I am. I love myself the way I am. There's nothing I need to change. I'll always be the perfect me. There's nothing to rearrange. I'm beautiful and capable of being the best me I can. And I love myself just the way I am. Is that not the epitome of loving yourself? And then you add in the pride and vanity and everything with it? Yes, indeed. All right. But what happens when they're lovers of themselves? They can't see right from wrong. So it goes on. Lovers of money, braggarts, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, and isn't that exactly the way that it is in the world today? And even those religions which claim to be Christian really cannot help very much. Without natural affection, think of all of the perverse sort of love between men and women, men and men, and whatever. Implacable. Now that means unchangeable. Slanderers. Ho! Oh, sound like the news? Without self-control. Savage. Despisers of those who are good. Now, keep that one in mind because there are a lot of people who despise some of the things that I'm going to tell you, and they are despised from the pulpit of the so-called Christian churches of the world. Why would that be? Well, we'll find out. Betrayers, reckless, egotistical, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And they have their sports. They have the entertainment. They have Facebook. They have all the digital communications that there are. And it's quite a thing. They love their movies. They love their evil. And they love all of these things. And if you tell them it's wrong, until something drastic happens, they'll never get the point. Why is that? Now, it's still a strange thing. Let's come back here to Proverbs 16. 
And here in Proverbs 16, it tells us an awful lot about human nature. This is really quite quite a book, the whole book of Proverbs. And what you need, you need to get our series on Proverbs so you can go through it. Proverbs is the best book in the world, especially for young people to learn right from wrong, good from evil, how to govern themselves, how to be successful without all the headaches and heartaches of the way of the world coming in and cluttering it up and destroying what they're trying to do. Now, Proverbs 16, verse 25, there is a way that seems right to a man. When it speaks of a man singularly, that means man or woman. And remember, the last three letters of woman is man. Why is that? Because she was taken from man, as you find in Genesis, the second chapter. Now notice the end result of this. But the end thereof is the way of death. Now, why is that? And some people can't see it coming until it's too late. Now, let's tie this in with something else, and then let's see some things we can do to change. Verse 2, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Sometimes it doesn't even matter what someone would say don't do that. And then they get rebellious and they won't turn from it. But the Lord weighs the spirit. So all of us are recording everything that we've ever done and is stored somewhere in our minds. Now then, in spite of the evil that we read in Mark the seventh chapter, out of the heart of men come evil thoughts and so forth, every human being still has a desire to have things good and right his or her own way. But it never seems to work out. Have you ever watched the series that they run, I Almost Got Away With It? Now, most of these are inmates who escaped from jail. And they evade the law, in some cases, for up to 20 years. But they always get caught. Yet they think if they, if they live without breaking the law, they won't get caught. Now, that's kind of a quirk of human nature, because if they would have lived within the law... They wouldn't have committed the crime, and they wouldn't have ended up in jail, right? So this quirk of human nature is strange. Everyone wants to just do whatever they want. And the blessings of God must come. Well, when you leave God out, They'll never come. And yet still down deep inside of the human mind is the desire for everything to be right and good. So let's take a little examination here and let's look at a small town. Not too big, not too little, just a nice small town. And in this town, we're going to construct this on a completely different basis. Everyone is going to pledge to live by the Ten Commandments of God. Now, there will be people all hostile about it because there are despisers of those who are good. Okay. However, stop and think about it. Ten Commandments. Let's start with the last six. Honor your father and mother. No teenage rebellion. Everything's working out great. Okay? Mother and father are loving their children. Their children are loving them, and the family is good. In this whole town. And everybody gets along. And as a result of that, 
there are no murders. Now think about the towns where there are so many murders today in America, especially Chicago and Baltimore, all right? There are other cities too. But here in this town, we'll call it Perfectville. There are no murders. Amazing. Everything is so good, they don't even need locks on the doors or on their cars. Everybody, as we will see, is keeping the commandments of God and living the right way that they should. So, let's go to the next commandment, commandment number six. You shall commit no murder. Now, Pilkington is the Bell Fountain mother accused of killing her three sons over a 13 month period. Her three month old son, Niall, died in 2014. Four year old Gavin died in April of 2015. And three month old Noah died in August of 2015. Think about that. No murder, no manslaughter, none of that. Everyone is looking out and taking care of their own lives, their own families, and getting along with everybody. Wouldn't that be perfect? Okay. Now let's go to the next one. Very important. There are a lot of people in the world today get angry at me for saying this, but the commandment is, you shall not commit adultery, which is the main commandment for all of the sexual misbehaviors that human beings have. Think about that. And with that then, there would be no divorce. Wow, what a wonderful place to live. Wouldn't you like to move there right away? But if you did, you would have to pledge that you would live by the Ten Commandments, okay? No adultery, no homosexuality, no gay marriage, all of that. Nope. Just male and female, and a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. And all the children going up are happy and wonderful and obedient, play with each other, love with each other. Just think of how plus perfectville would be. All right, let's take it one step further. You shall not steal. Whoa. School kids is not allowed here. That's a sign Fast Stop employee Fidel Warda posted on the door after he says too many kids have been stealing from the store. This is happening on a weekly basis. Like two times a week. Employees tell me the kids would steal up to $40 worth of candy each time they came into the store. This surveillance video shows three teenagers taking candy from the aisle that Warder says they never bought. I know that sometimes in the neighborhood, things like this do happen, so. According to JSO's crime map, the store's neighborhood is no stranger to crime. In the past month, there have been five homicides, 17 assaults, and nine burglaries within a mile radius of the fast stop. Okay, you shall not steal. Your property is yours, and if you just happen to lose something, you get it right back. Amazing. No con men, no thieves, banks to tell the truth. Everybody who works and has a business, a fair profit, a fair gain in Perfectville. Now just think how great that would be. How many businesses lose, lose so much money because of employee theft? This is the police booking photo for 29-year-old Stephanie Butler. She used to work at this Waukesha State Bank branch along Sunset Drive in Waukesha. You think when you hire them that they are um, honest and decent people, and it's unfortunate that this happened. So here in Perfectville, you would have no stealing. Next one, and you shall not bear false witness. No lying, no fudging on the truth, see, because everybody's going to be living by the truth. Wouldn't that be perfect? No lying, no cheating. What's that going to do to the court system? Ha, make it almost non-existent. What's that going to do to a police department? Well, 
The most that they would have in Perfectville would be a constable because there's no crime. All right, then we come to the last commandment then. You shall not covet. And covetousness is that which then causes all of the other things to take place. Shall not covet anything of your neighbors, his house, his wife, his assets, or anything like that. Now that we've covered the last six, let's go to the first four, which would cause the last six to work because you can't just go by the last six alone because in Proverbs 16, 25, it says there's a way that seems right to a man and the ways there are the ways of death. Now, if you have the commandments of God and you live by them and that becomes part of the way of your thinking, then it'll work. But it won't work without God. The true God, not a God, not a religion, but the true God. So let's go back to the first commandment. And everybody coming to Perfectville pledges with their lives to keep all the Ten Commandments of God. So it means you worship the one and only true God in the persons of God the Father and Jesus Christ, who have created everything that there is, the heavens, the earth, the sea, everything there is, and that is the God who gives you life. And that is the God who gives you everything that you have, everything necessary for physical life. Now think about that for a minute. Everyone having the true God. No more fighting over religion. No more little battles. No gangs in the streets. None of that. They, they all love God, obey God. All right, let's go to the second commandment. You shall not make any image of anything that's in heaven above or on the earth beneath, and you shall not bow yourself down to worship them nor serve them. So think of that. No crosses, no crucifixes, no statues to worship, no idols of Buddha. And the third commandment is, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Now, how is it taken in vain mostly? Well, most people look at that and say, well, I don't swear. Swearing is the least preaching things in the name of God that are not true is the worst. It's like one man said, all the problems that we have in America lie at the doorstep of the pulpits and the cathedrals and synagogues in the nation because they do not take this pledge of living by the Ten Commandments literally. Okay? Now the biggie, the big fourth one, and that's the one that you hear me talk about all the time. And you might ask a question, well, Fred Calder, why do you talk about the Sabbath all the time, and why do you knock in the head all those Sunday keepers all the time? Well, because that's one of the biggest lies the world has ever seen, and it's one of the greatest uh, assaults against God that there has ever been, and it's one of one of the things of taking the name of God in vain so profoundly every seventh day by people who are so-called good Sunday keepers. Granted, they're not as evil as those people locked up in jail. That is true. And granted, they have some morals about them. That is true. But in the communities that they live, do they have murder? Do they have adultery? Do they have lying? Do they have cheating? Do they have stealing? Do they have coveting? Yes. Do they have those who love themselves? Yes. Quite a thing, isn't it? So here, Perfectville would then be, everybody keeps the Sabbath day and calculate time the way God does and the day begins at sunset and ends at sunset. Now then, 
Sabbath day is the seventh day called Saturday, and it begins at sunset Friday night. Now then, in Perfectville, everybody would prepare for the Sabbath on the sixth day the way they're supposed to. Everyone would be ready for the Sabbath to come. They could rest. They could get up. There will be places of worship and study for everyone from the parents, grandparents, right on down to the children, all taught God's way. Think about that today. What would happen if now someone declared the Sabbath day to be kept by everyone in the nation, regardless of who you are or where you live? Think how many activities that would stop. How many things the businessmen would complain, the sports people would complain, the broadcasters would complain, the television people would complain. Because from Friday night to Saturday and then on into Sunday, you have all these sports going on all the time, and they make billions and billions off of it, don't they? Yes, that would upset the apple cart. Think about all of the businesses. Yes, got to close down Friday night until Saturday night. No business, no buying, no selling. Now you know why it says that human nature is enmity against God. But this is what God would require. So if you want to live in Perfectville, that's what you would have to do. Now, a little secret. That's exactly how Christ is going to make the world when he returns. And he's coming. And when he comes, it's going to be the most powerful, fantastic event since the creation of the world. And he and all the resurrected saints are going to take over the whole world and going to make the world Perfectville everywhere. Now think on that. That's the purpose of God. So when God says, come out of her, my people, he wants you to come to him in repentance and baptism, and baptism is a covenant. You go to the series we have right here on Church of Home, the meaning of baptism, and you need to understand it. Because if you want to get out of the territory of being against God, even though you're well-intended, you've got to repent and get into the territory that is God's domain with his spirit. And the whole purpose of Perfectville, as I describe it, which then comes down encapsulated in our lives that we are to be perfected through conversion, and that comes from this commandment, Matthew 22, greatest commandment is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your being. And the second one is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. And this is what Christ will bring to you when you repent and turn to him and come to him on his terms. And God the Father will love you, Christ will love you, and you will receive the Spirit of God so you can grow and overcome and develop the character you need so when Christ returns, you will be able to join the family of God as a spirit being and help bring perfect will to the whole world. That, in summary, is the whole plan of God. So be sure and visit our other website, truthofgod.org. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. So until next time, this is Fred Calder saying, so long, everyone.